a reading from the first letter of St. John. Something which has existed since the beginning, that we have heard and we have seen with our own eyes, that we have watched and touched with our hands, the word who is life. This is our subject. That life was made visible, we saw it and we are giving our testimony, telling you of the eternal life, which was with the Father and has been made visible to us. What we have seen and heard, we are telling you, so that you too may in union be with us as we are in union with the Father and with the Son, Jesus Christ. We are writing this to you to make our own joy complete. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Rejoice you just in the Lord. Rejoice, Rejoice you, you just, just in, in the Lord. Lord. The many coastlands be glad. The Lord is King, let earth rejoice. The many coastlands be glad. Cloud and darkness are his raiment, his throne, justice and right. Rejoice, Rejoice you just, just in, in the, the Lord. Lord. The mountains melt like wax before the Lord of all the earth. The skies proclaim his justice. All people see his glory. Rejoice, Rejoice you just in, in the Lord. Lord. Light shines forth for the just and joy for the upright of heart. Rejoice, you just in the Lord. Give glory to his holy name. Rejoice, Rejoice you just in, in the Lord. Lord. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. We praise you, O God, we acknowledge you to be the Lord. The glorious company of the apostles praise you, O Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. On the first day of the week, Mary of Magdala came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved. They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, she said, and we don't know where they have put him. So Peter set out with the other disciple to go to the tomb. They ran together, but the other disciple, running faster than Peter, reached the tomb first. He bent down and saw the linen cloths lying on the ground, but did not go in. Simon Peter, who was following, now came up, went right into the tomb, saw the linen cloths on the ground, and also the cloth that has been over his head. This was not with the linen cloths, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple who had reached the tomb first also went in. He saw and he believed. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Tourists visiting the west coast of Turkey today head for Ephesus, one of the most dramatic and best preserved Greek sites. In doing so, they often miss two of the most important sites in the Christian world. For just down the road are the tomb of St. John the Apostle and Evangelist, and up the mountain is the chapel built on the foundations of the house where the Blessed Virgin Mary is considered to have spent her last days. You might consider that the celebration of St John the Apostle and Evangelist intrudes into these days of celebrating the birth of Christ and of the Holy Family. Yesterday we heard, the gospel, we heard in the Gospel of the child Jesus in the temple when he personally affirmed to Mary and to Joseph that he had come into the world to fulfil a specific purpose. And Mary would live to see the end of his life on the cross, the fulfilment of that purpose. And what did he say just before he died? He entrusted the care of his mother to the Apostle John. His last instruction on earth was to find for his mother a family. And what a guardian. 
While the other three evangelists gave the message of Jesus in a historical setting, it was John who wrote the most searching, the most intensive, the most human, and the most difficult material, which even today challenges us. One gospel, three letters, and a revelation of the end of the world. If you had been Mary, who would you have chosen to remain by your side after the earthly death of your son? Other apostles were out and about spreading the word, but Mary might possibly have considered John to have truly entered into the heights and the depths of her son's teaching. And so to Ephesus. John did not stay there, but in Seljuk, down the road. And there was built long after his death an enormous basilica, a place of pilgrimage until the coming of Islam. And in the middle of this ruined basilica, underneath where the dome was, is the slab which is reputed to be his tomb. Many of us have visited the tomb of St. Peter in the Vatican and come away uplifted. But entirely different is the experience of standing by the tomb of St. John, open to the elements, be it the burning heat of Turkey or the bitter cold of a Turkish winter, where you can relate to the conditions of his later life. So what happened to Mary? Well, in 1891, decades after a vision to, to Catherine Emmerich, a German mystic, the Lazarus fathers found the house she had described at the top of the mountain above Seljuk, just as she had described it. It dated from the 6th century, but underneath the foundations were of the 1st century dwelling. It is ever since, and to this day, blessed with the name in Turkish of Meriam Anna Evi, the House of Mary. The Catholic Church has never pronounced on the authenticity of the house. It has, however, from the blessing of the first pilgrimage by Pope Leo XIII in 1896, taken a positive attitude towards the site. Pope Pius XII, in 1951, elevated the house to the, state, to the status of a holy place, a privilege later made permanent by Pope John XXIII. Respected by Islamic Turks, it was there that Pope Benedict XVI celebrated Mass on his visit to Turkey. And so that is why we should consider the Feast of St. John highly appropriate in the Christmas octave. In these three days, we have celebrated Christ's birth on earth, his announcement to Mary and Joseph of his mission, and today, the fulfillment of the remit he gave to St. John to look after his mother. For all the feasts of the evangelists, uh, uh, the apostles and evangelists, we wear red vestments, except for one, St. John, when we wear white. And if, as I did at dawn 25 years ago, pray to, uh, if you pray to Mary in that little chapel on the top of that mountain in Turkey, when you walk out, you will surely offer up a prayer of thanks to St. John, the Apostle and Evangelist. <laughs>